Aloha! My name is Jen Rasmussen Lair, owner of Paradise Nectar Apiaries in Hawaii. I'll be talking today about treatment free hygienic beekeeping, what it is, and how do you do it. The foundation of treatment free beekeeping is honeybee biology. Understanding the biology of the honeybee helps us know what they need and when to intervene. Hygienic beekeeping is basically what it sounds like. It's all about keeping things clean and healthy. I use treatment-free hive management strategies, which I'm about to explain in this presentation. Every hive is made up of three casts of honeybees. There's the queen bee, which there's generally one mated queen bee per hive, worker bees, which make up the majority of the hive and do all the work, and drone bees, which are the males. The gender and roles in a beehive are determined by how much an egg is fed and what size the cell is in. Every honeybee starts out its life as an egg and is fed royal jelly for the first three days. As the egg transitions to larva, the cast of the bee is determined by what it is fed. Queen bees only consume royal jelly, which is a lipid-rich white substance that is mixed with the secretions of the hyperpharyngeal glands in worker bees. Worker bees feed royal jelly to the queen and developing eggs. Worker bees begin feeding bee bread, a mixture of pollen and nectar, to the eggs as they transform into larvae on day four. The amount of bee bread they feed the larvae and the size of the cell determine if the bees will be workers or drones. There are four stages of brood development, which are egg, larva, pupa, and adult. The chart below shows the gestation period for each cast. The brood cycle is the time frame from egg to an adult bee. The pictures on the right show the gestation period for a worker bee. Since worker bees only live for four to six weeks and there is a constant need for replacements, the queen bee lays eggs continuously to keep the hive population growing, so there are always enough bees to maintain the hive. The picture on the left shows uncapped brood. The picture on the right shows capped brood. If a hive should grow too large for the box they are in, they will swarm. This creates a break in the brood cycle. When a hive swarms, the queen bee leaves the hive with up to 75% of the bees in search of a new home. The remaining bees raise a new queen. The worker bees have approximately one week to clean, sterilize the hive, and build fresh new comb before the new queen will be ready to lay eggs. This time of cleansing is especially important for honeybees in Hawaii. This is how bees naturally fight off pests and disease. Here in Hawaii, queen bees may develop from egg to virgin queen in 10 to 12 days. Queen bees mate within a week following birth. She may go on more than one mating flight in that week. Queen bees may live for up to four years. The sole responsibility of the queen is to lay eggs and to sustain the growth of the hive. Worker bees develop from egg to adult bee in 21 days. They live for four to six weeks. Worker bees are responsible for feeding the brood, drones and queen, grooming and cleaning, guarding the hive, attending to the queen, foraging for food and preserving nectar and pollen. Drone bees develop from egg to adult bee in 24 days. Their sole responsibility is to mate with a queen from another hive. Once they mate, they die. They are groomed, fed, and cared for by the worker bees. Worker bees determine the fate of the drones. When there are too many, they will actively decrease the population. Drones live for approximately eight weeks. Honeybees have four basic needs. They need clean air, food, water, and shelter. Honeybees forage for nectar, a carbohydrate that bees consume for energy. Nectar contains water, sucrose, glucose, and fructose. Pollen is 55% protein and 55% carbohydrates, of which 2% is fat. Water, bees drink water off of leaves and blossoms to stay hydrated. And plant resins. Plants secrete resins to protect themselves from damage. Plants also produce resins to protect new buds from free radicals. Resins are a plant's equivalent of our white blood cells or immune system. Worker bees gather resins from plants for their medicinal, microbial, and antiseptic properties. Why do bees make honey? Honey is a preserved form of nectar. Bees remove water from the nectar and cover it with a wax cap for storage to keep the moisture out. By observing honeybee brood cycles, it became clear that when bees would swarm, the break in the brood cycle would lower the varroa mite population in the hive. Varroa destructor are parasitic mites that live on honeybees. They weaken the bees' immune systems and can cause bees to develop other diseases like deformed wing virus. 
Honeybees have adapted to living with the mites by using swarming or reproduction as a way to keep balance in the hive. Bees can manage fairly well on their own using this strategy. However, over time, the beeswax in the hive becomes dirty with contaminants brought in by foraging bees. Beeswax is lipophilic, which means that it absorbs fat-soluble and oily substances. Many products used to kill weeds, fungi, and other pests are use fat-soluble oily bases in their surfactants. When bees forage on plants that have been sprayed by these products, they gather the poison, nectar, pollen, and or plant resins and take them to the hive for storage. The poison may be transferred to other bees and eventually into wax cells where it will soak into the wax. If bees are forced to live on these combs, they will get sick. It is essential that honeybees have the ability to make fresh white beeswax combs to raise their brood in on a continual basis. The main method I use for natural mite control and disease prevention is checkerboarding. Worker bees need to draw a new comb regularly to avoid a rural mite infestation. To encourage this behavior, use a method known as checkerboarding. Checkerboarding is simply placing an empty bar or frame between each complete and straight comb in the brood nest. Only place the bar or frame between combs that have the top two inches filled and capped. Do not place empty bars or frames next to nectar combs. The bees will likely extend the combs out rather than draw new ones next to them. Cycle out all of the old combs. Leave all brood combs in the hive as long as they look healthy. Harvest pollen and honey when it has been finished to allow the bees to continue to expand their brood nest. Checkerboard in the brood area whenever it is possible during each hive visit. It is important to maintain regular hive maintenance. Intuitive treatment-free beekeeping simply means assisting by observation and understanding of the needs of honeybees and aiding in their natural cycles without the use of chemicals, antibiotics, or anything not naturally found in a beehive, such as foundation sheets, plastic frames, etc. It's important to check the hive every two weeks or at least once a month. As you go through the hive, checkerboard in the brood nest. This will guide the bees to build straight combs. It is important to observe how many bees are in the hive and how covered the combs are by bees before adding empty bars or frames. The colony must be large enough to have the extra energy to extend to make the new combs. The general average is about one bee per square inch for comb coverage. As the hive grows, the maintenance stays the same. Let the bees make new combs by checkerboarding. Once combs get dark and the bees start filling them up with pollen and honey, harvest them. Then let the bees make fresh white combs. Make sure to leave all brood and nectar combs for the bees. Full pollen and honeycombs need to be harvested to make room for new brood combs to be built. This is what will keep them healthy and hygienic so they do not need to be treated. Swarm preparation and making splits are a big part of beekeeping. It is important to be ready before swarm season starts so that you can keep all your colonies and be ahead of the curve so you don't end up watching them dangle high up in a tree and be unreachable. There are certain signs to look for to know if your hive is about to swarm. Bearding, which is a cluster of bees hanging on the front of the hive. The hive is full of combs, none may be removed, and there is no opening to build new comb. There are queen cups or cells present, and bees may be rushing in and out of the hive in large numbers. When to split a hive. Queen cups with eggs or cells are present in a hive near worker brood on the edges or the bottom of the combs. It's important to make your splits. A hive is full of brood combs with no honey or bee bread to harvest and there is a cluster of bees on the front of the hive. When not to split a hive? When it puts your bees at risk. This could be because of beetle infestations or maybe low population. These are not the times to make splits, especially during any kind of cold or rainy season. Why do we split a hive? We split a hive to create a break in the brood cycle during the period of time when worker bees are raising a new queen. This allows worker bees to clean the empty cells and sterilize them with propolis before the virgin queens are born. Proper checkerboarding prior to splitting a hive allows worker bees to make new combs for the new queen to lay eggs in once she has mated. To increase the hive numbers in the apiary, to avoid catching swarms in precarious places, to monitor lineage and genetic traits, to aid bees in lowering mite populations, by creating a break in the brood cycle, most of the mites are born with the emerging bees prior to the emergence of the virgin queens. Worker bees meticulously clean the mite-infected cells before the new queen is mated and laying eggs. 
And another time is it's a perfect time to clean out cones and have that have been in the hive for a year, which reduces Nosema serrana spores. And the last reason is a hive is ready to swarm and has combs that cross the bars or frames in a hive. The signs that your hive is struggling with Varroa mites are that there are perforations in the cell coverings. This means that mites have burrowed their way in and probably just before the brood was closed. There are mites on the bees. Bees have deformed wings. There are queen cups by the drone brood. A small hive is preparing to swarm or there are mites crawling on your combs. How to assist bees struggling with Varroa infestation. Remove all older, spongy, contaminated combs that have perforations in the brood cell coverings and or have mites crawling on the combs. If this is the only comb the bees have, remove it and replace it with fresh, healthy brood from another hive. Remove all queen cups and checkerboard in the brood nest. Split the hive and checkerboard in the brood nest of each, of each colony. Harvest all pollen and honey cones that are attracting small hive beetles or diverting worker bees from properly cleaning and guarding their hive. There are some preventative strategies for managing small hive beetles that may be used. It is important to keep all hives strong and combine hives when needed. Do not try to keep weak hives going. Make sure hives are in the full sun as much as possible. Clean up dead outs or slime outs in the yard. Check your yard at least every two weeks or once a month. Do not leave wax uncovered. Store all wax and honey in covered containers or buckets. Do not make splits in a heavily infested yard. Beetles will most likely take over it if it's not strong enough. Any honey pulled from a heavily infested yard must be processed and stored in a closed container immediately. Do not store empty supers on your hives. Keep bottom boards clean. If using a screen bottom board, be sure to use a sealed drawer or tray with diatomaceous earth or clean vegetable oil underneath to catch beetles. It is our practice to use diatomaceous earth because it is biodegradable and food grade. There must not be any holes or gaps in the hive uh, drawer or screen except the entrance. It is important to squish all the beetles you release. The bees have enough work to do. They have had them trapped before we come along and we are the ones that release them. So it's important that we squish them if we can. Monitor overall hive health and hygiene. If a hive is weak, give it less room or combine it with another hive. Weak hives are welcoming places for small hive beetles. Stress is the most attractive thing to small hive beetles. Times that are more stressful are swarming, relocation, super seizures, and human intervention. Clean your honey house and wax melter after every use. Make sure combs are put in the hive the same way they were removed. Combs that touch create hiding places for beetles to lay eggs. The basic methods for treatment-free hygienic beekeeping are to make a maintenance schedule and check your hives every two weeks, or at least once a month. Keep your apiary tidy and manageable. Use clean, well-constructed hive boxes. Checkerboard in the brood nest whenever possible. Harvest bee bread and honeycombs when complete. Do not leave finished bee bread or honeycombs in the hive for long. Split hives when queen cups with eggs or cells are present. Remove cross comb, old combs, and any spongy contaminated combs whenever necessary. Monitor brood development and mite population. If an imbalance begins, intervene. If a hive swarms, check the existing hive immediately and remove all bee bread and honeycombs. Keep the bottom and sides of the hive clear of debris. As I mentioned before, bees come in contact with many things when they are foraging for food and unfortunately, some of them are herbicide. This next section covers what I've seen by observations based on when people in my neighborhood spray and when I see their effects on my bees. The most obvious sign of herbicide contamination is dead bees on the ground under the entrance. It is normal to find dead and dying bees on the ground in front of the hive since worker bees only live for four to six weeks. A healthy honeybee that dies of natural causes appears fuzzy and dry. The body decomposes, maintaining a brittle, dry form. Dead bees found 24 hours after exposure to flowers sprayed with herbicide appear to be wet, juicy, swollen, or sticky, to have less hair and their thorax is shiny, and to be stuck together in piles under the entrance of the hive. The picture on the right is of honeybees three days after being found dead on the ground, as shown in the picture on the previous slide. Decomposing dead poison bees appear to be darker and loose pigment, 
to be sticky and stuck together in piles under the entrance of the hive and to change into a black gooey pile. Over the past few years, I have observed the contamination cycle, which begins with a person spraying flowering plants with herbicide. Honeybees forage for pollen and nectar and drink water from flowers and leaves that have been sprayed with herbicide. Herbicide and surfactant residues get ingested by honeybees and carried back to the hive. Honeybees share the contaminated pollen and nectar with other bees in the hive, and the pollen and nectar is then stored in the beeswax combs. The fat-soluble residues from the surfactants and herbicide is absorbed into the lipophilic beeswax combs. Both bees that have ingested the herbicide and surfactant residues, as well as developing larvae that are fed the contaminated pollen and nectar, die. Dead bees and larvae may be seen on the ground below the hive entrance and on the floor inside the hive. Beeswax combs in the hive develop an oily and sponge-like texture and appearance, and often you can see dead bees in the cells. As you can see in the pictures on the right, day one is a person spraying with herbicide. Day two and three, the flowers turn brown and die, and at the same time, dead bees appear under the entrance of the hive and inside the hive. From days two on, beeswax combs are abandoned, brood left to rot, and the combs become oily and sponge-like. And through days four and 10, you can actually see dead bees decomposing under the hive entrance in big piles. In August 2018, my family and I moved to Wainaku after losing our farm in Kapoho to a lava flow. The following information has been observed and recorded by me since that time. In August, we moved to the farm with 67 hives and we watched our neighbors and county workers spray. We saw honeybee populations drop in several hives, combs were abandoned, and brood was removed from several hives. I'll admit that in the beginning, I tried to blame it on rain and elevation and them not knowing where flowers were, but over time it became very obvious that whenever the neighbors would spray, bees would die and the combs would look different. Visible signs of damage on beeswax combs, dead bees in the hive and on the ground below the entrance, and even fish in our spring-fed ponds develop bug eyes, and some of them even combust. Watching these losses, we became, it became very obvious that we needed to do something and figure out what was going on. This slide is of symptoms of contamination on beeswax combs. The pictures on the left are of healthy brood comb, and the pictures on the right are of unhealthy brood comb. The main difference in these to note isn't the color shifts necessarily because bees change the pigment in the comb by coating it with propolis as they're sterilizing and also pollen can stain the comb after they've put it in the cells. However, the main difference if you look at the two is that yellow and strange brown color that creeps in in the combs that have been contaminated. I often have noted this because of the fact that the comb at the bottom becomes very spongy and thick. I equate this to the fact that bees probably are trying to go over this again and again with propolis, which may account for some of the color, but from what I've researched and studied, I've noted that the wax spongy quality is often because of the introduction of the surfactant, which is fat soluble and which is actually more toxic than the herbicide itself. As an educator in my community, I have found it very difficult to know how to respond to what's happening to my bees. The losses happened so quickly that they kind of took me off guard. I tried to take a more scientific approach and reach out to the proper authorities, but when I found I didn't really get much follow-up, I became a little depressed. All I decided I needed to put that in the right direction, so instead of getting disappointed in what wasn't happening, I thought about what I could do as one person, and then how I could spread that on to other people to make them feel empowered that they could do something too. And the answer is flowers. We can heal the world with flower power. The more food we plant for ourselves and for bees and other pollinators, the better off we're all going to be. So if you're finding yourself wondering, well, what do we do now? Or, I'm not sure if this beekeeping thing is really for me. You can make a difference in the lives of bees and all of those around you by planting organic flowers right now. I wish you well, my friends. Be blessed. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening to Mama Gaia? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening to Hachamama? People of the earth, come one, come all. 
together stand strong We're standing for the earth We're standing for the trees Standing for the waters and the air we breathe We are listening We are listening We are listening To Mama Gaia We are listening We are listening We are listening, we are listening To Pachamama And fire, and she's tired from the damage she has acquired. I aspire to be the change in the world that is required, and raise the vibe higher so we can see in a clearer frequency with decency. Be kind to one another and repeat good deeds as we sow these seeds. Unity and community is how we succeed. So please take heed, listen to Mother Nature as she takes the lead. We're connected to Earth, and she's connected to us. One love vibration, skin to bone, ashes to dust. Listen to whatever heart beats in unison, and you start to remember where. You are from, you are one And we're one for all Ancestors reaching out, we're gonna answer the call All creation is a song Of many frequencies And I'm here to sing along In perfect harmony All creation is one song A university And in this school of life I'm learning purposefully To live my life with integrity Sing the song of life in me I hear the song of life in me I am listening